in physics, there is a concept called the propagation of errors, or it's in a class, I think, where you have to figure out how errors made in the beginning propagate towards the end um, and what effect they have and stuff. We are currently propagating an error I made during filming, and we're just going to have to deal with it and live with it and be okay with it and make our peace with it. I thought it'd be totally easy and fun to have, like, green background so I could do, like, whatever. And no, no, it's it's not, but now we're having to live with it. Enjoy the video. Okay. Hi. This is going to be a weird video, and we're just going to roll with it. I have a busy, crazy couple weeks coming up. Uh, it's like the meme. No sleep. Club. Another club. Hot dog stands. Lemonade stands. It's doctor. Another doctor. Medical test. Doctor. Doctor. And just, yeah. Uh, some of it's routine stuff, like seeing the dentist, but I usually lose at least a day because of my nerve from that. So here is me mid-filming rule five, do not do what you hate or whatever it is, uh, to do a baking video, because why not? I like baking, and it's not something I do frequently because I am a tiny person-ish and don't have the best metabolism for stuff, so I need to be conscientious of what I eat, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's let's make some blueberry stuff because it's the only way I can eat blueberries. <laughs> because it is 3.45 a.m. It's going to be more asthma than like baking is usually, so uh, Dr. Husband is currently asleep, so I'm not going to be using any of the power electronic things to mix stuff, so I'm going to have some time to chat while I'm creaming the sugar. So yeah, let's let's talk about what we're making. <laughs> this is our trusty recipe book, as you do, and because, uh, you know, why not print out recipes you like, annotate them, uh, so that way if you lose the website, it's no big deal, you've got a printed copy. Okay, so we are making, from Taste of Home 2013, a blueberry love cake, although I was making this in grad school, so it was definitely before 2013. Hopefully I can find the link for you guys, if not, I'll just put the recipe down in the comments. But yeah, so it's a blueberry loaf cake. It is very lovely. The recipe is credited to Nancy Anderson of Pennsylvania. So we have all the mise has been plossed. It's spent like 40 minutes doing that. The oven has preheated to 350, although the oven sucks. So it has actually 375 on the readout, but we have a little thermometer. So we know it's 350. Okay. So we have the wet team, we have the dry team. Let's get started. So in a large bowl. Yeah, because we add the dry to the wet. Yes, we add the dry to the wet. So wet team. We cream the butter and sugar until light and fluffy. Butter has been out since nine last night, so it's nice and soft. And this is unsalted butter, because that's what we bake with. This is my favorite whisk. <laughs> we have two whisks. This is my favorite. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here comes the consequence. consequence I started filming at 9 o'clock last night. Like I said, it's 3.45 in the a.m. Do I have the ingredients right? So this is a half a cup of butter softened and one cup of sugar. It seems like a lot. I'm going to weigh it. A few moments later. Roughly right. Uh, anyway, so let's cream us some sugar by hand. Yay! So I guess start with start with one thing. Just just talk. I have an oral fruit allergy or something. I forget exactly what it's called, but basically, you're like raw fruit. It's no go for me. Uh, it makes my throat itch, which I was told by a nurse at the hospital when I had H1N1 it means I have an allergy, so I probably shouldn't do that. Okay, I can I cannot do that. So it, it sucks because raw fruit is just a non-starter. I mean, it's not all fruit, at least like um, tomatoes are still okay, avocados, um, small quantities of lemon and lime, like basically guacamole is safe, so thank god. 
uh, I love me my guacamole. Yeah, like it started probably when I was in middle school, but I didn't really notice it until high school. So I didn't really eat fruit until I started dating my husband. This is going well. Maybe I should use the other whisk. Let me just get everything in the kitchen dirty. Yes. Consequences of my actions chasing me right now. That's what happens when you bake, right? Everything, everything is dirty. This is a disaster. Okay. Meet the other whisk. <laughs> I'm not supposed to go pear shape this early. Anyways. That's <sighs> that whisk. We're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna roll with it. Um, it's like oranges. I would have to eat with milk, which is almost like a creamsicle, but worse. Uh, Cause yeah, I would itch. <sighs> is the whisk just a bad idea? I'm gonna use a beater. Cause uh, <laughs> good. Oh my god. I don't want no consequence, consequence, consequence. I don't want no consequences chasing me right now. Okay, we're gonna bust up things first and then see if that helps. Cause right now, this is embarrassing. Oh, it's fitting for how the night has gone. Cause oh my god. Yeah, so like oranges were probably early. The first one I really noticed was watermelon. Um, let's get a wood spoon. Fuck. 12 seconds later. So the first one I really noticed was watermelon. Is it would just itch and itch and itch. Like I want to shove a fork down my throat and just itch. It's like, okay, watermelon's not my favorite. I can deal with this. And then grapes. Okay. That kind of sucks, but again, I can roll with it. Like, you know, as long as it leaves my strawberries alone. And then like raspberries, blueberries. Kiwi. Kiwi was an early casualty. Uh, but then in undergrad, then the strawberries went. I can't have raw strawberries. It's so very sad. Especially because my husband loves fruit. In the olden days when he used to have to go back to the U.S. to do shifts, he would go to a place that had like a really nice farmer's market. There'd be days like you would just go to the farmer's market and buy like five dollars worth of fruit and that would be his lunch because this was many years ago and five dollars of fruit would get you pretty far so like i bought a whole thing of blueberries so I'm gonna have a lot of blueberries to eat oh god <laughs> why did i think this was a good idea anyways so with the oral allergy fruit allergy whatever i think it's like pollen or something but for me at least heat denatures whatever the offending allergen is. So if it's cooked, I can eat fruit. Fortunately, like blueberry muffins, love blueberry loaf, love. This is gonna take forever. Someone take this consequence, consequence, consequence. Um, Someone take this consequence and change me right now. To pivot. Oh, I in my downtime. One of the things I watch, other than like movie reviews, are like baking videos or cooking videos. I should say all kinds. Jamie and Julia, or Anti-Chef, I think is the channel name there. Um, the guy like working his way through Julia Child stuff. And, um, and then also like the guy behind the French Laundry and then some Italian cookbook, like all kinds of fun stuff there. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. I'm this close to getting the beater. Um, also watch some British like heritage thing. I think the chick's like the character's name is Mrs. Holcomb. Maybe I could be wrong. And yeah, she does stuff by hand, or at least they do some of it on camera. Cause it's like a historical site reenactment thing for uh, the Victorian era. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. And like what the kitchen. What they would have made, how they would have made it. Uh, sort of like a running joke between me and my husband. Because you know the joke about British food being so bland and tasteless. And it's like, they boil so many things. Why are you boiling that? And uh, I think the first couple times we were shocked. Because it's like, okay, we're wrapping up meat in a cloth. Okay. And then we're going to boil it for a bunch of hours. Love that. Sounds great. <sighs> 
This is not going well. I can't cream sugar. It sucks. And maybe this is just being done in front of the camera. Because that happens. It's where it like knocks at least 10 or 20 IQ off. Oh. So of course, I'm a righty. I mean, odds are good, right? And like, I've been doing yoga to just do something active. I don't know what it is, but like, I keep having things with like my joints where it just sort of like seizes up. And that happened with this shoulder yesterday. And then with the adventures of trying to make the thumbnail, which is why this is entirely set up like it is. My shoulder's angry. It's hot because I can't have the house open because then the windows make all the noise with the road and stuff. And the oven is still on. Ugh. Wah, wah, wah. I did this to myself. <laughs> this is so important. I can't half-ass this stuff. Sigh. Doctor, 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 doctor. Oh, what was the last update I did? It's been a while. Got some progress happening. My swallowing problem looks like it might be something called esophageal gastric junction outflow obstruction. You have a sphincter, you have a sphincter, and you have the swallow tube. As the doctor likes to say, it's so funny. She likes explaining stuff, which, cool. Um, but she calls it like the feeding tube, eating tube, like all sorts of things other than esophagus for whatever reason. Uh, but anyway, so there's all sorts of ways the swallowing can go wrong. Oh, this video is going to be educational, isn't that fun? The first swallow test I had was just a basic barium swallow, and that was last year. Oh. So you can have the swallow go wrong up top, where the formation of the food bolus is messed up somehow, and then you end up like swallowing it wrong and it goes into your lungs, and then that can cause all kinds of problems for you. Um, and so the barium test, I swallowed normally, because that's not where my problem is. So then the second test was an endoscopy to see if there was anything structurally wrong with my swallow. and. No, the, don't see any tumors or anything obvious that would be causing difficulty with the swallow. So then the next test was the manometry. There's another word to associate with it. I forget what it is. I'll put it on screen. Uh, where they put an instrument through my nose, down my throat, and have me swallow a bunch of salty water on an empty stomach. Two out of ten would not recommend, but got some useful information out. And with that, they can tell what's going on if anything's going on because it's a bunch of like pressure sensors and i guess salinity as well so they can see where the water is and how the squeezing is happening swallowed a bunch of water laying down sitting up and the guy tried to kill me <laughs> not really uh because it was like you swallow you do a single swallow and then you don't swallow again for 30 seconds which is really hard because like for me i just i guess instinctually habitually have a double swallow I don't know, like do a bunch of single swallows and then there's a series where he's like, he has this little, you have a straw going to the salt water. And so it was like sip, swallow, sip, swallow, sip, swallow, like 10 all in a row and then don't swallow. And I can just feel it sort of like backing up. And uh, I guess something about the data on the first series, he thought it could be better. So he had me do it again and salt water, empty stomach, thing down my throat like it was it was bad news bears and I ended up like just coming back up had a little barf bag uh, so he, he was very apologetic after that anyway so for that they were looking to see what the problem was so good news is it doesn't seem to be achalasia which is a thing that happens when the esophagus doesn't doesn't do the muscle series it needs to do to get the food and liquid down. So it's not that. Like, that's going fine. But my bottom sphincter is not relaxing like it should. And there could be a couple causes for that. And so the doctor wants to do a confirmatory test, which is another barium swallow. Lucky me! To see if the water's sitting, or like the barium water, uh, what the time course of stuff clearing is. So I'm doing that next Monday from time of filming. Uh, today is August 3rd for record. I'm doing that on Monday. Fun. And then once we figure out what's going on, then we'll discuss options because there's options, which is nice. The interesting thing is this can be caused by like autoimmune problems. 
I've already tested positive for some autoimmune stuff, but not like anything in specific. So when I have my follow-up with the rheumatologist in September or October, be like, hey, guess what? Found out some other stuff. Ugh. So this is where I've got the sugar right now. I'm not quite there. I'm gonna, this might be done. I'm gonna try the whisk again. It's done. I'm gonna do it anyway. Why not? I had another follow-up with the doctor because I guess she has to see me every three months to continue prescribing me the painkillers. And the last one she mentioned like, oh yeah, you're supposed to see your pain doctor. Like, you know, it says like in six months, follow up. Meanwhile, in my notes, I have that like, I was going to contact him when I was ready to do the uh, nerve block for my trigeminal neuralgia thing. Let's see what's going on there. Oh my God, that was a terrible idea. Are you light and fluffy? Sort of fluffy. And I'm not ready to do that yet. Maybe never. But yeah, so I was like, I don't need to talk to him. The doctor was very insistent, and since the doctor is prescribing me, someone writing the prescription, fine. So I'm seeing him soon. Hopefully that's an uneventful appointment. Uh, on other fronts, neurology was a bit of an adventure last update I had for you guys. Eventually. Okay, back back to Spoonie. Anyway, so the last update I have for you guys on the neurology front is the neurology department isn't even, like, they're not taking new patients. Period. Full stop. Like, don't, we're not even booking. Like, if you're not already seen by us, sorry. My doctor had the idea of trying a different location. Like, it's still the same HMO, whatever, but it's, like, further. It's a different city. So it's a little bit more of a drive. It's fine. Because uh, they were able to see me. So I'm actually going to see a neurologist this year, you guys. Like, wild. That's going to happen. Hopefully, symptoms will show up. Or at least I actually have videos this time that I can bring on a laptop to show the neurologist. So I'm just like, oh, uh, here's a link. Which will never be looked at. Yeah, so all kinds of doctor visits. Good stuff. I'm sure I'm forgetting. Uh, that's probably late and fluffy. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cream until fluffy. Beat in the eggs. Oh, I didn't get the milk. Oh, I am so sweaty. <laughs> I refuse to take off the sweater. I'm sure, some of you will understand. Forget the milk. I forgot to place a mise half cup. Bear back. Twenty minutes later. Yes, it's just as well. I forgot some of the things like measuring spoons. Large bowl. Cream. Beat in the eggs, milk, and vanilla. Milk. You like the table? It's actually my old desk. Sort of. Uh Sort of, because it's the tabletop from my IKEA desk that I used to have. You guys may recognize it. Uh, on top of a chair, or not a chair, a ta folding table that is like 20 years old and has seen some shit. Let me tell you. Like, I think we left it outside for a while, so the surface is all messed up. So the husband just sort of uh, attached the IKEA desk to the top of it. And here it is good as sort of new. Can I use the whisk now? Please. It is sloppy. Sloppy toppy. Oh, and I'm wondering if I didn't cream enough. I can't do this anymore. See if I can salvage this. <laughs> okay. It's funny that I brought up Jamie and Julia because this is feeling like one of his videos. <laughs> A kingdom for an extension cord. You know where one is, Max? Okay, well, I can't find an extension cord, so you're just gonna have to trust that I'm doing this? Later. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but that is not looking right, so... We're gonna start over, I guess. Yay. 
One hour later. Okay, so sacrificed one of my fans to get an extension cord. I know where it is. Cause this is this is it's 4:30. I don't want to get this done. So I, I am pulling a cat hair out. We are creaming the sugar again. This time by this. Butter. Creaming the butter. can't tell you how tired I am. I'm afraid of like underdoing it. So that's where we're at this time. Not that you can easily see. A little longer. Can't do this one long. Can't overdo this, I don't think. One eternity later. Like I still need to film one of the chunks. Yay! So if I look extra grumpy in the Rule 5 video for the experiment stuff, you know why. Butter is creamed, hopefully. Eating the eggs. Sure. I'm shaking. Oh my god, I'm so tired. You know? Again? Hopefully for the last time. And it's looking funny again. Love that. Teaspoon. This is gonna be funny. Cause uh, it's been a while since we've used vanilla. <gasps> Holy shit. Ah. Come on. Teaspoon. I'm just dripping on the table, but whatever. What team is assembled? I'm looking really weird. Yeah, the butter's like melting. Ugh, fuck. Let's see if I can still pull out a what W combined flour. A dash of salt. How much is a dash? Hopefully. A teaspoon of baking powder. I'm gonna use a half teaspoon because, oops. It just went everywhere. Love that. Oh god, I'm gonna <laughs> just add another mess to clean up. Well, that's why I'm not doing it in the office. I knew it was going to go everywhere. Add to cream mixture until just combined, so don't overmix. <laughs> the butter is separated out from this, you guys. Oh, let's see if I can do this without spilling. Like, oh, we're, gonna, we're just going to go for it. Just fuck it. Come this far. So that was one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a dash of salt, and a teaspoon of baking powder. We are just combining because you don't want to overmix this. Me and my melted butter again. Almost, almost, almost. It's not going to be perfect. There. Okay. Gently folding blueberries. So we have ooh, a cup of blueberries. Let me just fold them in. And we'll see if the thing that usually happens with this recipe happens. Uh, where you end up with all the blueberries on the bottom. And like nothing on the top. But it's still good. And I already have my greased loaf pan that I think we've had. I think it might be from a garage sale. <laughs> like uh, when we were moving into our apartment our sophomore year. That summer before my husband and his mom just hit like garage sale after garage sale looking for stuff and got us pretty well set up for things. I'm pretty sure this uh, loaf pan is from that. I think this little mixer thing is after. But uh, we do have a KitchenAid that was liberated from my in-laws. They weren't using it. We 
We took it. So we are in the loaf pan. Well, at least this part's looking right. That's always encouraging. So we have two teaspoons of sugar, and I need a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Ooh, fancy. So we have the spice rasp thing. Okay. So this. Sprinkled on top. Yes. So I'm doing this now before filling's done. It needs to bake for an hour in a 350 oven. So uh, yeah, it should be done with the experiment stuff I done. So my initial plan was like, oh, I will finish recording and then I'll do this and while I'm cleaning up all that stuff because I have to like clean my makeup brushes, wash my face, do all that stuff. But uh, that won't take an hour. <laughs> so do it now. Nice. So much stuff to put on top recipe. Okay, so this goes in 350 or 50 to 55 minutes or until blah, blah, blah. Cool for 10 minutes before removing from pan. So to the oven and I'll see you guys later. Epilogue. Hello from later that day because it was way too early in the morning when I was filming. There's this. No. So I've got color processing going for rule five and now it's time to see how it is. I ended up going like a little over 55 minutes. Uh, at 45 minutes, I discovered we don't have toothpicks, or if we do, I don't know where they are. So uh, use some chopsticks to do the little test thing. It works. And then let it cool for like 16 minutes because I was taking makeup off and it just, it stuck. It didn't want to come out. So like, there's a little bit on the bottom that seems to have re-adhered in the cooling process. That's nice. Yeah, so this, I, I keep pointing at it. Here's the loaf. Ooh. <laughs> Cut off the butt for my husband. He likes the crispier, caramelized end bits. It's uh, not so much. If I don't have to eat them, I won't. And, ooh. Not do the thing of dropping it on the ground. Ooh. I imagine it's good. I, mean, I used to make this a bunch in grad school. It's so sweet. Could probably, could probably drop the sugar a bit. A bit. A little bit of cinnamon on the top. It's like, to me, it's like the best part of the blueberry muffin, which is like the top part. Um, in in the loaf form. So. It turned out. <laughs> Yay. In retrospect, with the hand creaming, adding the milk first may have been a mistake because it didn't look like uh, what I was expecting. So that's why I panicked. But then doing it with the beater, adding the eggs first, you know, it emulsified, it looked right. And then adding the milk, it did, it separated. It was probably like the butter and the milk just weren't playing right with each other which is what happened the first time is it just separated and like oh god so it probably would have been okay like granted my creaming of the butter didn't go quite as well so it probably wouldn't have been as good but it turned out whatever um yeah so anyways this was this was baking with Cass Ooh, I'll put like I said I'll put the recipe down in the comments somewhere and See you guys next time.